everybody or should i say good night are you ready to receive a word from the lord very simple one point message i have today it's about unlocking your potential unlocking your potential you and i are alive on planet earth today and that means only one thing it means only one thing because you are alive that means there is some potential that is not yet utilized god still has some unfinished business with you amen god has something that he's saying i put seeds of greatness inside of you and that seed is going to sprout out and come and before that purpose of god is accomplished in your life i will not let you die right and that's the reason you and i are alive today god wants to unlock potential inside each and every one of us that's the reason i want to encourage everyone today the only way you can unlock your potential and that's a one point message of today is you have to move everybody say move one more time everybody say move you have to move in order to unlock your potential it's very interesting on the flip side of things when you don't unlock your potential you get outdated the potential i'm talking about let's is, uh, let's assume that this glass of water right was your full potential from your birth to your death right this is your full potential now as you grow and live god's life and live in ministry do work in your corporate offices in your family some potential is utilized correct but assume that with so much of unutilized potential if you and i were to die and be buried all of this potential that god put inside every one of us is gone to waste correct god has not left you to die only because there is still some untapped potential inside every one of you your best days are ahead of you and not behind you god's greatest miracles in your life are not in your yesterdays but god's greatest miracle in your life is in your tomorrows amen and that's one of those things one of the reasons you know sometimes it's always when you're comfortable sometimes it can become a curse as well it become a curse as well you know look at the case of nokia right 1998 to almost 2010 2011 nokia phones were one of the best in the world everybody wanted to have a nokia phone and when somebody went and told them you know what somebody is coming up this guy called steve jobs is coming up with a phone which has got one button in it Nokia and BlackBerry said everybody want QWERTY keyboards who will want a touch screen nobody will buy them few years later you tell me where Nokia is you tell me where back BlackBerry is doesn't exist after the world war 2 the swiss watches were number one watches in the world right precision timing and in 1960s in that region there was a group from japan who went to these swiss manufacturers and said you know what we've come up with a brand new technology called the quartz technology it's an electronic watch do you guys want it the swiss manufacturers looked at them and laughed at them they said nobody is going to buy electronic watches you know we swiss people are the greatest people on the earth true enough this company in japan went to a geneva show they did their whole sales pitch and casio you remember casio casio watches were born they became a billion dollar company and they are multi billion right now the danger of staying too comfortable can become a curse for every one of us there is untapped potential inside every one of us i read a funny story uh, about a, a grave digger he he dug the grave right he dug a 6 feet long grave and a 6 feet deep grave and you know he was he finished the day and he went off home it was completely dark and there was a man who was walking through the graveyard and you know by mistake he accidentally fell into the graveyard and this guy was just about 5 feet tall he was trying his level best to come out of the graveyard but he just couldn't come out and being an intelligent fellow he said you know what i'm going to relax why do i stress out let me go sit in the corner it was completely dark the whole graveyard was dark he was sitting there after a few minutes there was a drunkard who came he also fell inside the graveyard and he was there trying his level best to come out of the graveyard he was grappling and groping and trying his best to come out but he just couldn't come he couldn't see the other person who was already in the graveyard because it was all dark now this first guy who was already in the graveyard he said let me play a prank let me play a prank on this drunkard 
So in an eerie voice, he said, Hey, you are going to die in this graveyard. You're never going to get out of this graveyard. This drunken guy got scared listening to it. He just jumped and he actually came out of the grave. Unlocked potential. Sometimes God propels us into certain situations that are uncomfortable for us. Why? Because then you will propel out and come out of the problem and the trouble that you are in. God sometimes, you know, if you give and take away the, the story of Job, God sometimes puts us through that, that pain, that suffering, that trauma, tears in your bed, all of that only because you will tap that untapped potential and just spring forth. I want to encourage all of us today. The curse of not moving ahead, the curse of not moving ahead should not get into your life and my life, whether it's your corporate life, whether it's your personal life, family life, all the time the Christian's walk is onward, forward, and upward. Remember that song? Onward, Christian soldiers. You've got to keep on ma marching on, keep on going on. How do you keep on going on? You know, when I came all the way from uh, Himayat Nagar here, I've, I've been through, I think, a lot of Hyderabad that I've never been in my entire lifetime. I came through all the new, new places, all the way to Chandanagar, and I've never been to this part of the, of the city. But I actually relied completely on my GPS, on my map, perfectly brought me right till the doorstep. And the GPS was very precise. It gave me clear directions when I wanted to move from point A to point B. It said, you know what, take this road and come to Medipatnam. After that, take a turn and come to the you know, inner ring road. Don't take the outer ring road. Move for four kilometers. You'll come to that junction and then take, take another flyover. It gave me clear 15-step overview of what I need to do to get from point A to point B. A perfect plan that was displayed to me. God, similarly, has a perfect plan for each and every one of us. When God asks us to move, from our comfort zone. He's got a plan very clearly. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, by the way, if you're taking down notes, I'm going to be quoting a lot of scripture that might help you. Jeremiah 29, 11, very famous verse, right? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope because he lives we can face tomorrow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. No eye has seen, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for those who love him. Amen. When God asks us to move, understand that God has got a master plan for each and every one of our lives. Nothing to worry. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 9. Isaiah 55 verse 9. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, in some of the uh, translations say, my plans that are higher and better than your plans and your thoughts. You know, I read this story about a few years ago. It's a true story, by the way, of an American golfer. Of an American golfer who was invited to play golf by the sheikh, by the, by the king of one of the Middle Eastern countries. And so this golfer accepted the invitation. He said, yes, king, I will come and play golf in your, in your country. And so the sheikh sent a private jet all the way to America, to the United States, brought the golfer all the way to Middle East. They played golf. After the golf was over, the sheikh called the golfer and said, you know what? Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. You came all the way from America. What do you want? Ask me anything and I'll give you. Imagine a king asking you that question. Ask me anything and I'll give you a shake. Now, this American golfer was, was very kind and humble. And he said, you know, you know, shake, it's just the honor and privilege that you actually called me from America. You sent your private jet. You treated me like a king in your country. Right? So I just want to thank you for it. You give me whatever you want. I, I don't need anything. You know, God has blessed me. You give me whatever you want. And the sheikh said, okay, let me think about it. And then he sent him back on his private jet all the way to America. And on the way in the private jet, this guy was thinking, a sheikh asked me, what do you want? And I just said, I don't want anything. And then he thought, maybe the sheikh will actually give me something. You know, maybe, you know, the sheikh might give me a nice diamond stone in the form of a golf ball, you know, like a nice diamond stone. Or maybe the sheikh might give me a golf club, you know, the golf club. Maybe a golden golf club he might give me. And he was making all of these assumptions and dreams of what the sheikh might give him as a gift. Thank you, gift. 
He went back to US, three weeks passed by, four weeks passed by, five weeks passed by, nothing happened. Sixth week, he heard a knock on the door. And the FedEx person came and said, sir, uh, I got a parcel for you from the Sheikh. And this guy was looking all around the FedEx guy. What did he get? The golf club and, you know, golden club and all of that. He said, sir, this is a sheet of paper. I want you to just sign it. He signed it and said, what is this? He said, this is the title deed entitling you to own the land for 500 acres of a golf club in Miami, Florida. 500 acres. We think golf club. The Sheikh thinks golf club. We think I am senior analyst to assistant manager. But God thinks, no, no, from senior analyst, I want to make you the CEO of the company. I want you to take you places you never, never dreamed of. Look at the story of Ruth, right? Remember, she was gleaning in the field. She was a laborer. She was a laborer. From a laborer, God said, your vision, your dream for yourself is too less, too less. I want not, you to, make, not to make you a laborer. I want to make you an owner of the field, amen? That is what God has for Christians like you and me. When the Son of God lives inside of us, Emmanuel, the Christmas time. Today is the first sun, uh, Sunday in Advent, right? Christmas. When Emmanuel comes inside of us, you and I are engrafted into God's kingdom. You and I are Jewish people, not Indian people, not uh, uh, from Hyderabad or Telangana. No, 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 no. We are Jewish. Why? Because you and I are sons and daughters of the king. Jesus is our elder brother, and Jesus was Jewish. So naturally, you are Jewish. Amen? The son of God is your friend. Emmanuel, he lives inside of us. I want to encourage you. The latent potential that you have, don't die with so much of potential left in your system. Move. Take steps. And God is going to bless you golf club, <laughs> not just a normal club. You know, sometimes the difference between a GPS system and God is that God doesn't give the entire plan. He has a master plan, correct? But he doesn't give the entire plan. He just gives us one step at a time. And we get really worried, God... I want to see the master plan. Where will I be when I'm 50? You know, the interview question, they ask you, where do you see yourself five years from now, seven years? I don't know. You are asking me five years from now, seven years from now. Five years from now, seven years from now. God does see the master plan, but he reveals it one step at a time. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 105. You know this verse. Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Everybody say lamp. One more time. Everybody say lamp. And everybody say light. A lamp can probably light just about five meters radius, right? That's all. It can't go more than that. A light cannot give you, let's say, suppose you're going from Hyderabad to Bangalore, talking about the GPS, right? Let's say 600 kilometers. And assume you've got the best powerful headlight on your car, which gives you almost a one kilometer radius throw, right? One kilometer radius throw. Can I ask you a small trick question, a puzzle? Ready? How can you make the light which throws for one kilometer, how can you make the throughput or output to be two kilometers? How? Exactly. You move one kilometer, you will see the second kilometer. You see the second kilometer, you see the third kilometer. The way God deals with us is when you take a step of faith, and say, you know what, God, I know you've given me dreams. Some of you have a dream to start your own company. Some of you have a dream to say, I want to do my higher education. Some of you have a dream to become a team leader or a vice president or the CEO. Some of you have a dream to write a book, to write a song, to get into dramatics. Some of you have a dream to do something different for the community, to help people, poor people. You have a dream, but you have that as a latent potential. I want to activate the dream today evening in this church. Amen. I want to activate that dream. God will give you one step at a time. One step at a time. In fact, Ben Harana was talking to me about, about how the whole church was built from 1987, 86, 87. God led the stalwarts of this, the, the, the saints of this church, one step at a time. He didn't give everything all together. Miracles after miracles happened. The slab came, the doors came later, and the flooring came later. One step at a time is how God works with every one of us. 
I want to encourage you. Look at look at how God told Joshua. Remember Joshua chapter three and verse thirteen. Joshua three thirteen. You know he said when he had to cross the river Jordan, Joshua was standing in front of the river. You know what happened? God told him, you know what? Ask the priest to step carrying the ark of the covenant to touch the waters. When they walk through the waters, then the river Jordan will part. Now imagine you were Joshua. You saw Moses raise the rod and cross the Red Sea, right? Maybe he would have gone the previous night. I don't know. It's not there in the Bible. I'm just throwing, uh, you know, I'm just imagining. Maybe he went the previous night to Jordan. He said, my boss, Moses, he lifted the rod and the Red Sea parted. Let me also try it. Because he probably he took a rod when nobody was looking. He slowly raised the rod. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Why? Because God very clearly told him. That as soon as the as the sandals of your of the of the priest will touch the river Jordan, then the river Jordan will part. You take the first step, Joshua. When you take the first step, I will part river Jordan for you. You know, talking about Nashon, you want to hear a very interesting story. It's there in the rabbinical Jewish literature. It's not there in the Bible, but it is not a fairy tale. It's not a, a legend. It happened truly, but it was written by the Jewish literature. It's called the rabbinical literature. When Moses raised his rod, right? When he was parting the Red Sea. When Moses raised his rod, what happened? What happened? Nothing happened. According to the Jewish rabbinical writings, when Moses raised the rod, Philist uh, the Egyptians were chasing them, nothing happened. But there was this one man called N-A-S-H-O-N, Nashon. You can Google him. He's there on Wikipedia also, by the way. Nashon. Nashon was the captain of the Judah, Judah tribe. He was the captain. He was actually the brother-in-law of Aaron. He was the father-in-law of Rahab. His, his name is actually mentioned in the Bible in Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. When Moses raised the rod, this man, Nashon, he saw his leader raise the rod and he knew his leader was connected to God. And God had told Moses, we're going to cross the Red Sea. But Nashon took it in faith. He said, you know what? If Moses raised the rod, I'm going to walk the Red Sea. So he walked the Red Sea. Nothing happened. Water came till his knee height. Still nothing happened. Water came till his waist, till his shoulder height. Nothing happened. At a point, the Bi you know, in the rabbinical literature, in Jewish literature, it says, till the water came almost till Nashon could not breathe anymore, nothing happened. And suddenly, when the water was about to drown him, that's when the Red Sea parted and whole Israel went. The point I'm trying to make is, how many of us are Nashons here today? N-A-S-H-O-N-S. God said, move. God said, I've got latent potential. God has given me a dream and he asked me to activate my dream. I want to move, take my first step. Yeah, you don't have money. Yeah, you don't have resources. Yeah, people are saying, cannot do it. You cannot do this. You're too young. You, you're, you, you're, out, you're too old or this thing. But I heard the word of God today evening in Bethel Church. Amen. I heard the word of God and I want to move. And God's going to open doors you never dreamed of. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. Hebrews 11 and verse 8. When God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1, Leave your country, your people, your father's household, and I will take you to a new country. I'm sure all of us are like, you know, if God gives us the word, I will take you to America or New Zealand or visa. Yare, thank you, Jesus. Amazing love. And you got the visa, H1 visa. You're very happy. Well, very no, no, but coming back to the point, God, Abraham went back to Sarah, his wife, and said, you know, God asked us to, to immigrate, to leave the country. And so Sarah was like, yeah, great, awesome. I mean, let's do it. Let's just leave the country and go. Uh, so Abraham, where are we going? I don't know. God didn't tell me where to go. But Abraham, God clearly gave you some GPS direction. He told you where to go, what is the land. La, no, God just told me land flowing with milk and honey and, you know, stars. But Abraham, at least tell me, is this new country we are going to, is it a hot country or cold country? Will it snow there? Do you want me to get some jackets and sweaters? Or I don't know what kind of country we are going to. God said, just leave, just leave. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, Abraham, not knowing where he was supposed to go, not knowing where he was supposed to go, he followed God's instruction and he just left by faith. By faith. Many a times you will not see what God, you can't get the details. 
You know, sometimes I believe God doesn't give you details for two reasons. Suppose God says, you know, suppose you have a dream to start your own business, correct? And after today's message, you listen to Sam Rufus and you said, okay, God gave me clear direction. I'm going to start my business. I'm going to start my company or whatever dream you have, write a book or if, uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, you put your, your step, first miracle happens, second miracle happens, Jordan parts, people come, resources come, finances come. You keep moving, very happy. And God suddenly tells you, you know, suppose God says, 27th of November 2017, one year from now, correct? Today is 27th, 2016. 2017, next year, while you're working on your dream, you're going to be going outside in BHL and you're going to meet with an accident. You're going to break your hand and your leg is going to be broken. What will happen to you from now <laughs> till one year from now? <laughs> What's going to happen? You will be so fearful, correct? You will be fearful. Are they would have been to God told that definitely it will happen. Compulsory it will happen. God told my hand will be broken, leg will be broken. Hundred percent. God told it. What you'll be living in fear. You won't leave your house. You won't go in the bike. You'll wear triple helmet and helmet for your hand and leg also. You'll wear. You will not move. You'll, you'll try to stay away. You'll do uh, boss. I'll do Skype boss. I'll do Google Hangouts. I will not come outside the house. Or what if I get hit by a lorry or a bus or whatever? You won't even live your life because you'll be so much in fear, in fear if bad things were to happen. Yeah, you know, sometimes in life, life is never a theta 45 degrees. You know what theta 45 degrees is? You remember? Right? Life is never 45 degrees. Life always goes up, down, up, down, up, down. So in this down moments, if God tells you what is your down moment and gives you the details of your down moment, you will say, boss, yeah, dream, what did God, and happy gone, and I'm working very good in Deloitte, and I don't want to go and do all this. Because you're scared of the down moments, the dangerous moments. Another reason why God doesn't give you the details of your route map or the plan is, suppose God says next year, November 27, 2017, you're going to get a billion dollars, one billion US dollars into your bank account. What's going to happen to you? Today onwards, you'll relax. You'll go on holiday. You will enjoy. You, you'll stop reading your Bible. You'll start trusting in God. I, I have all the money, na? I am rich now. Why do I need God? You'll give up on God. You'll slowly be led astray. Many a times, God doesn't give you the pluses and the minuses in your route map because God is saying, I want 